this is your first time here and would like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Hi, I'm Lawrence DeMonico, president of Rare Breed Firearms and our sister company, Rare Breed Triggers. By now, I would imagine many of you are aware of the situation that we are currently dealing with. But whether you are or aren't, I'm going to start at the beginning and bring everyone up to speed on the situation. And for those of you who just want to help and would rather not watch this entire video, please visit rarebreedtriggers.com to learn how to help. On July 27th, Craig Sayer, the special agent in charge of the Tampa Field Office of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, accompanied by a government attorney, personally served Rare Breed Trigger's owner and attorney with a cease and desist letter informing us that our trigger, the FRT-15, had been determined to be a machine gun by the ATF. The letter stated that we needed to immediately cease and desist the manufacture and sale of the FRT-15 and that we needed to contact the ATF within five days to discuss a plan to address the FRTs that have already been distributed. The directives laid out in the cease and desist were based on an alleged examination performed by the ATF finding that the FRT-15 had been properly classified as a machine gun as defined by the National Firearms Act. I say alleged examination because no copy of the examination was provided with the cease and desist. And during the conversation that followed, not only did Special Agent Sayer admit he had not actually seen a copy of the examination, but in addition, Special Agent Sayer stated that he hadn't even seen an actual sample of the FRT-15 trigger. Contrary to the findings in their alleged examination, the fact of the matter is that the FRT does not, cannot, and will not fire more than one round by a single function of the trigger, period. That's important to note because that is probably the most pertinent portion of the definition of a machine gun as defined by the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act. Despite this fact, along with the absolute lack of any evidence or strict proof to support the ATF's claim, we immediately responded to their cease and desist to inform them that we did not agree with their claim, we would not be complying with their demands, and followed up by filing a lawsuit in the United States Federal Court for the Middle District of Florida. So one might reasonably ask how we could be so confident in our opinion of the facts and be so brazen in our noncompliance. In order to explain, I'd like to go back and talk about the early stages of the FRT. Before ever bringing the FRT to market, we did a tremendous amount of due diligence to ensure it was a perfectly legal semi-automatic trigger. Not only did we consult numerous attorneys, but we also sought out the most well-known and well-respected subject matter experts in the entire firearms community to provide us with their expert legal opinion on the FRT. To ensure we were thorough, we didn't just settle for one or two experts. We sought the legal opinion of four subject matter experts. The first expert was Kevin P. McCann, Esquire. Mr. McCann is a practicing attorney and is a former ATF resident agent in charge who retired from the ATF with 25 years of service. The second expert was Daniel O'Kelly, the director of the International Firearms Specialist Academy in Dallas, Texas. Mr. O'Kelly is also a former senior special agent and the chief firearms technology instructor at the ATF National Academy, where he wrote and co-wrote the entire firearms technology course of study used to train agents and investigators on, among other things, what is and is not a machine gun as defined by federal law. The third expert was Rick Vasquez, another former ATF special agent and former acting chief of the firearms technology branch, where he served as the ATF's expert on all Gun Control Act and National Firearms Act identification and classifications. And for those of you that don't know, it is the ATF's firearms technology branch that actually does the assessment on items like the FRT-15 and makes the determination on whether or not it is a machine gun per definitions in the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act. The fourth expert was Brian Lutke, the president of Firearms Training and Interstate Nexus Consulting in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mr. Lutke is also a former ATF special agent having served 22 years with the ATF. During that time, he served as an instructor at the ATF National Academy where he taught the application of the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act identification and classifications. And in his last position with the ATF, Mr. Lucky served as the chief of the Advanced Firearms and Interstate Nexus Branch, a sub-branch of the Firearms and Ammunition Technology Branch. All four of these experts separately concluded that the FRT-15 is not a machine gun. Now, numerous people have asked why we did not seek an opinion letter from the ATF before going to the market. And the simple answer is... As we had already done our own due diligence by consulting with these four experts, all who determined the FRT-15 to be a perfectly legal semi-automatic trigger, it was unnecessary to seek the approval of the ATF, 
as semi-automatic triggers are not a regulated item. And before anyone makes the assertion that we simply shopped around and cherry picked for experts that would agree with our own opinion, I'd like to remind everyone that these are these same experts that had testified on behalf of the DOJ and ATF in countless cases in criminal prosecutions as to what does and does not constitute a machine gun under federal law. So simply put, these aren't our experts. These gentlemen are the experts. As a result of the conclusive and absolute findings of these experts, we are confident that every action we have taken is legal and within the boundaries of the law. As a result, in the lawsuit we filed in the United States Federal Court for the Middle District of Florida, Orlando Division, we are asking the court to halt the ATF from one, forcing rare breed triggers to cease operations, two, seizing any property or records from rare breed triggers, and three, seizing any property currently possessed by the customers of rare breed triggers. In addition, we are asking the court to rule that one, the ATF's conclusion that the FRT constitutes a machine gun is without authority and contrary to the plain language of the statute. And two, their claim that the FRT is a machine gun is arbitrary, capricious, an abuse of discretion, and otherwise not in accordance with the law. Further, we have asked the court to rule that the ATF's attempt to redefine the definition of machine gun to reach the FRT, one, is in excess of the agency's statutory jurisdiction and authority and is short of the agency's statutory right. And two, that their arbitrary and capricious attempt to redefine the definition of a machine gun to reach the FRT will also prohibit the ownership, possession, and use of firearm accessories that are not prohibited by the relevant statutes. Of course, now that the ATF has finally produced the alleged examination report, we will be adding to our complaint the specific elements of why and how the exam is without merit. Now I would like to specifically address everyone that is currently concerned about owning or possessing an FRT-15. There have been a handful of gun tubers and other henny pennies that have been screaming that the sky is falling and everyone that currently possesses an FRT-15 has become a felon overnight. While some of that is purely clickbait, many others are simply misinformed. No one has committed a felony or become a felon yet by simply owning an FRT-15. Just because the ATF has determined the FRT-15 to be a machine gun, doesn't make it so. I'd like to point out that the only entity that's been served with the cease and desist is rare breed triggers. That specific cease and desist has zero relevance to anyone that may have purchased and currently possesses an FRT-15. And now that we filed a suit against the ATF, DOJ, and Attorney General, all parties involved must go through the motions and the litigation must play out before an actual legal ruling is made on the classification of the FRT-15. Not until such time can the ATF address the FRTs that are currently in circulation. While the ATF is certainly attempting to turn you into a felon, they would have to first charge, prosecute, and convict you of having a machine gun before succeeding in that endeavor. And while we're on the topic, I'd like to mention that to date, there has not been one single person prosecuted and convicted for having a bump stop. As we all should remember, it was another arbitrary reinterpretation of the law that allowed the ATF to reclassify the bump stock as a machine gun. And while they may have reclassified it as a machine gun, we all know that the bump stock doesn't actually meet the legal definition of a machine gun. I make this point because there's only been one person to date that's actually been charged with having a bump stock, but that case was quickly dropped after the individual's defense attorney received an expert legal opinion letter from Rick Vasquez stating that the bump stock is not a machine gun. And keep in mind, Rick Vasquez is one of the same experts who has also already gone on the record stating that the FRT-15 is not a machine gun. Now, any reasonable person would conclude that the case was dropped because the prosecutor knew he couldn't win the case. Simply put, a prosecutor would have to convince a jury that a bump stock actually meets the legal definition of a machine gun without allowing for any reinterpretation. And of course, we all know that isn't possible. Based on the ATF's recent erratic and capricious behavior, we felt there was a high likelihood that the ATF would come knocking. And of course, it's not because we've done anything wrong. In fact, we couldn't have been and still cannot be any more confident in the expert's analysis that the FRT is a perfectly legal semi-automatic trigger. But with the current political climate in our country, being right and following the letter of the law sadly doesn't seem to matter to half the country these days. As you've seen over the past few years, we've started down a slippery slope where unelected officials working in executive agencies have been allowed to create and enforce legislation that doesn't exist. From the CDC and their recommendations slash mandates 
to the ATF in our particular case. Unelected officials in these executive agencies are consistently sidestepping Congress and implementing legislation without any legal authority to do so by reinterpreting the law to fit their need in any particular situation they desire. We've recently seen that take place not only with a bump stock case, but with regards to arm braces. And of course, as they're also currently attempting to redefine frame and receiver. As a constitutional republic, we have elected officials in Congress that have the duty to legislate and create laws. Having a law enforcement agency such as the ATF creating leg legislation by simply reinterpreting a law and acting through executive fiat sets a terrifying precedent. And whether you're a 2A supporter or not, this should be more than slightly alarming to you. This precedent is not how our country is supposed to work. It grants too much power to the unelected officials running these executive agencies like the ATF, and worse, it completely removes Congress from the legislative process. I'd say this is the slipperiest of slopes. And the question is, where does it end? Well, I'll start by telling you where it began. Although bump stocks do not meet the legal definition of a machine gun, the ATF was granted deference to reinterpret the law when making their determination, which set a very dangerous precedent. Now the ATF is again attempting to reinterpret the law to meet their goal of outlawing the FRT. It does not take a firearms expert to understand the legal definition of a machine gun. What's more, it doesn't take a firearms expert to realize that the FRT does not meet the legal definition of a machine gun. However, that is not stopping the ATF from attempting to reinterpret the law. And it's not about right or wrong. It's about the ATF having too much power to sidestep Congress and create legislation where it didn't previously exist simply by reinterpreting a law to help them achieve a specific goal. What's to stop them from reinterpreting a law to mean that a fully assembled AR-15 isn't a machine gun? The nominee by the current administration to lead the ATF is David Shipman. And he is already on the record stating that he would like to ban the AR-15. He has also further stated that any firearm chambered higher than a 22 caliber that is magazine fed could be classified as a machine gun. And if these actions are allowed to continue, where will it end? We've always known the FRT was special and innovative, but I don't think we could have known just how important it was going to be to the two-way community as a whole. While you may or may not like or appreciate the FRT, you've got to understand the significance of our case. Simply put, if the ATF is allowed to prevail in their determination that the FRT is a machine gun, this is guaranteed to be the beginning of the end for gun owners. So how can you help us? One, I'd like to ask that you join our mailing list at rarebreedtriggers.com. Two, like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay informed. But just in case they censor us and remove our ability to share updates, please be sure to join our mailing list at rarebreedtriggers.com. Three, contact your congressmen and women along with your state senators and have them remind the ATF that they are not a legislative body. Four and last, we've received an outpouring of encouragement and have had several people ask how they can assist in what's sure to be a very long and costly legal battle with the ATF. If you would like to contribute to the Legal Defense Fund to assist in our fight, you can send a check to the law offices of Kevin C. Maxwell and mail it to the address below. Please be sure to note it is intended for the RBT Defense Fund. That is all. Thank you for your support. We will not give up the fight. You can bet on it. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing by clicking on the bell. Also let us know what content you would like to see in future videos.